Two Guyanese men, Oswick Basilio and Jeremiah Smith, who were shot dead in Suriname, were reportedly linked to recent murders in Guyana. Basilio was suspected in the murder of Joseph Wilkinson, while Smith was associated with the killing of Clinton Chase. These deaths may be tied to the murder of Quetzal Basilio, Oswick's brother, by his wife's lover, Muammar Jabbar, who had previously served time for another murder. Jabbar fatally shot Quetzal during a confrontation at his home. Wilkinson, who aided Jabbar in evading capture, was killed at a wake, and Chase, Wilkinson's relative, was shot execution-style outside his home. All involved had prior interactions with law enforcement. The Guyana Police Force, in a brief statement on Wednesday, disclosed that the crime chief had contacted authorities in Suriname, who confirmed the deaths of Basilio and Smith. A social media feud has escalated into a legal battle with a whopping three million U.S. dollars at stake. Melissa Holder, popularly known as Melly Mel in the online world, has filed a lawsuit against Rhonda Bob, also known as TikTok Auntie, and her company Let's Talk with Rhonda Bob LLC. According to documents filed in the New York Eastern District Court, which were seen by Uncut News, Holder accuses Bob of defamation, harassment, and causing personal injuries. Holder's lawsuit, represented by Washington law firm PC, alleges that Bob deliberately made false and damaging statements during live broadcasts, including accusations of criminal conduct and immigration violations. The lawsuit, citing complete diversity of citizenship and damages exceeding $75,000, seeks both compensation and a permanent injunction against Bob's further dissemination of false information. Holder alleges that Bob's actions not only harmed her reputation but also led to panic attacks, anxiety, and depression requiring medical treatment. Holder said she cannot stand by while her character is assassinated and her mental health suffers because of baseless accusations made by Rhonda Bob. She added that the lawsuit is about seeking justice and holding her accountable for the damage she has caused. After being served, Bob took to social media and ridiculed the lawsuit, claiming that her LLC does not have any money and she will show up to defend herself unrepresented because she is broke. How the f do you sue a multi-hundred dollar company for three million dollars? What kind of f cheap weed you are smoking? A multi-hundred dollar company for three million dollars and then asking for what? pre and post judgment cost interest and attorney's fee now this company never got no assets for you to, to to um seize and the company is going to show up with no attorney because they don't have money all right so they'll be representing themselves in the court it is worth noting that both Bob in her personal capacity and her LLC are listed on the suit as two separate entities. Magistrate Judge Cheryl L. Pollock will oversee the proceedings, with the first hearing expected soon. The High Court has declared that the Guyana Teachers Union was sidelined and undermined by the government. In a groundbreaking ruling, Justice Sandil Kassoon deemed the government's decision to deduct money from striking teachers' salaries as unlawful and arbitrary. The court affirmed the legality and justification of the GTU strike. Moreover, it found the government's cessation of deducting union dues from teachers' salaries to be discriminatory and illegal. Justice Kassoon highlighted the significance of the right to strike, emphasizing its importance as a fundamental tool for unions. The court also acknowledged the credibility of Julian Cambridge, the GTU's second vice president, while criticizing Chief Education Officer Saddam Hussein for lacking transparency and honesty during his testimony. Additionally, the court concluded that the government failed to fulfill its obligation to engage in collective bargaining with the GTU, neglecting its constitutional and legal duties. Attorney Darren Wade represented the Guyana Teachers Union with Roysdale Ford, SC, representing the Guyana Trades Union Congress. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Anil Nandlal SC appeared on behalf of the government. Vice President Bharat Jagdeo assured Guyanese that despite the government's lease of a 36-megawatt electricity generation ship, 
there would be no increase in electricity prices. He emphasized this at a news conference, stating that the deal with Urbicon Concessions Investment entails a fixed monthly charter fee and operation and maintenance costs, which won't be passed on to consumers. According to Jagdeo, the agreement stipulates that the Guyana Power and Light will cover the cost of supplying heavy fuel oil, while UCI will handle operation and maintenance for the duration of the two-year deal. GPL disclosed that they've already paid a mobilization fee and expect the power ship to be operational by early May, connecting to the grid at Everton Burbies River. Jagdale clarified that consumers are essentially paying for the capacity provided by the ship, including equipment use and operation and maintenance expenses, while GPL is responsible for fuel supply. This announcement followed inquiries from the opposition regarding potential electricity price hikes due to the government's previous purchase of second-hand generators. Opposition figures such as economist Elson Lowe from the People's National Congress Reform raised concerns over whether Guyanese would incur additional electricity costs due to past decisions, including the purchase of 17 second-hand generators. Lowe emphasized the need for government accountability urging a commitment that citizens wouldn't bear the brunt of any mistakes in the electricity sector. The ongoing blame game between the government and opposition parties regarding the state of the electricity sector reflects broader political tensions surrounding responsibility for past actions and their implications for the public. That wraps up today's top headlines. For more details on these and other stories, click the link in the description to follow Guyana Uncut News on Telegram.